thank you for the opportunity to present our study today um, in this beautiful city. I'm really happy to be here. Um, so I'm going to talk about our electronic cigarette trajectory study. Um, and this is a real-world study um, using qualitative methods to explore um, participant perspectives and experiences of vaping, particularly in the context of how they're using electronic cigarettes in order to avoid relapse to smoking. Um, so just want to acknowledge our fantastic research team, um, particularly Emma Ward, who's here in the audience today, who's been the lead researcher and collected most of the data for the project. Um, also our funders, um, Cancer Research UK funded this study, and I received fellowship funding from the UK Society for the Study of Addiction. No other conflicts of interest to declare. So very briefly, the background, we're all very familiar with this background. Tobacco smoking is the leading preventable cause of death worldwide. Um, the rates of smoking in the UK have continued to fall year on year. So latest statistics are the, uh, that the overall smoking prevalence, prevalence currently lies at 15.8%, which is fantastic progress. But there's still a lot of work to be done. Of course, we know that smokers smoke um, because they become addicted to nicotine, but it's not the nicotine that kills smokers. It's the inhalation of tar from the combustible tobacco smoke. Um, in the UK, we've been fortunate in having very well-developed stop smoking services that support people to quit smoking. Um, but many quit attempts, of course, happen um, in, out in the community. People don't always choose to access formal support. Um, and the e-cigarette has recently become the most popular method of smoking cessation chosen by people in the general population. So although many people do successfully quit smoking, the problem is that many people also relapse to smoking, and it's staying abstinent from smoking which is the really difficult thing to do. So why is continued abstinence from smoking so difficult? Well, um, we, we've heard a bit at the conference already about the many dimensions of um, smoking as an addictive behaviour. Of course, there's the physical addiction to nicotine, which is very strong. There's also a strong psychological dimension to um, tobacco addiction. So people come to form beliefs about smoking as a behaviour, as an integral to their lives, as perhaps as a form of stress relief or relief of anxiety. Smoking, of course, has a very strong social dimension. Most people initiate smoking in a social context as a young person. And for many people, the action of tobacco smoking is something that's associated with particular social groups. So staying abstinent from tobacco smoking for many people in the past has meant moving away from those social groups that may have been very important in people's lives. There's also a strong cultural dimension, so you're much more likely to become a smoker if you're brought up in a culture which, which is more permissive of smoking. And a really important concept, something that I'm particularly interested in, is the concept of identity. So over time, people become addicted to tobacco smoking and come to take on a social identity of themselves as a smoker. They come to see themselves as a smoker. And that identity aspect may be particularly hard to give up in the long term past um, the immediacy of a, a smoking cessation attempt. So in the past, um, I'm sure you're all very aware that we've had a variety of options for smoking cessation, from, from going cold turkey to all kinds of holistic support. In the UK, the Stop Smoking Service, the gold standard that's offered is a combination of pharmacological and psychological or behavioural support. But the problem of relapse prevention from our perspective is that none of these options previously have been able to attend to all the aspects of smoking addiction simultaneously. So although pharmacological um, medication may deal with the physical addiction to nicotine, the, particularly the social and identity related aspects of addiction weren't attended to by those previous methods of cessation. Now of course we have the electronic cigarette. These were described by Fagerstrom in 2015 as being a disruptive technology, um, something that really has the potential to redefine the landscape of smoking cessation, and particularly, I would suggest, um, be important in terms of relapse prevention. So the ele electronic cigarette um, can potentially um, attend to all the aspects of, of tobacco smoking addiction that we've just, I've just talked about. So not only do ele electronic cigarettes, the, the newer devices especially, deliver uh, nicotine in a very rapid 
um, way that is a sub direct substitute for cigarette smoking, but they also allow the user to have a, a social interaction and to perhaps take on a new identity, moving away from the ident identity of being a smoker towards the identity of being a vapor. There's a strong subcultural element to vaping, which might be important in terms of maintaining long-term long abstinence from tobacco smoking. So a bit of further background in terms of the qualitative evidence that's available on e-cigarettes at the moment. Um, more and more is emerging, but there's still um, a dearth of evidence, really, looking at user perceptions and real, really detailed analysis of patterns of use. So some of the work that we do have um, focuses particularly on smoking cessation. Um, there's been some excellent sociological work. Um, my colleague, Francis Thurlway, um, a brilliant ethno ethnographical paper looking at um, the importance of vaping within a very particular socio-cultural context. Um, and then, of course, we have um, important longitudinal but quantitative surveys that look at the use of e-cigarettes over time. So a study um, published by ETA just last week looked at the role of e-cigarettes um, in relapse prevention, but using... Um, quantitative statistical data. So our study really um, aims to meet at what, what we see as a gap in the current research understanding by looking really in detail at participant perspectives, um, experiences and patterns of e-cigarette use over time. So we're particularly interested in asking people about how they're using e-cigarettes um, to maintain their abstinence from smoking. So it's a qualitative study. Um, we initially purposefully sampled from what was then an ongoing longitudinal survey, um, also using adverts and snowballing um, to recruit our participants. We have been really successful in our recruitment approach, so we've added an additional online element where we're collecting detailed qualitative data in a narrative form from people online. And also using um, a photo elicitation technique to really probe um, participants to tell us in detail the patterns of use situated in their daily lives. So the interview design, this is a tongue-in-cheek look at the way that we approach qualitative interviewing. We ask participants to talk us through initiating tobacco smoking to start with, their history of tobacco smoking and history of any previous quit attempts. And then the main body of the interview, we ask participants to talk to us about how they first became aware of e-cigarettes, how they started using an e-cigarette, how they first got into vaping, um, how their use has changed over time, and then coming up to the current day, um, looking at their current e-cigarette use um, and using the photo elicitation data. So, so we ask people to talk about their routines, um, beliefs around e-cigarette use, rituals, the, the importance of relationships, and really probing them to tell us in detail about their, their current use. We also ask people to talk about the future for their e-cigarette use, whether they intend to quit or, or how they see their vaping developing in the future. And because our study has started, started recruiting last year, we've taken the opportunity to really probe around some of the changes that have happened in terms of the policy landscape over, the, over this time. So asking people about the new emerging heat not burn um, devices which are just becoming available in the UK, talking about the Tobacco Products Directive and people's views in terms of how that's going to impact on their vaping behaviour. Um, our sample, um, we've recruited to target, so we've um, interviewed 40 participants, and this has been a purposive sample, so it's not a generalisable sample, but we've really tried to purposefully sample to get as broad a variation of views as possible. And we've matched our sample um, to the smoking toolkit study data by looking at the demographics of people who've quit smoking in the general population over the last 12 months. So we've done pretty well um, in matching our, tar our target sample in terms of gender um, and age of recent quitters. Um, we haven't perhaps done quite so well in terms of the um, social grade uh, within our sample. We've oversampled the middle class um, population. Perhaps that's um, due to the, the place in the UK where we've been recruiting from, or perhaps it is a reflection of the majority of people who are tending to use e-cigarettes, but it's something that we want to address in our ongoing um, work. So I should say that I'm presenting emergent um, results today, and our analysis of this is really in the beginning stages and is ongoing. So moving on to the um, findings... We first of all plotted people's patterns of use over time and are interested in looking at pathways through smoking cessation and going on to vaping. So our initial sample of 40, 
um, had, uh, were all previous um, smokers. Um, all of them, of course, had quit smoking using an e-cigarette. Our um, inclusion criteria was, were that people had to, be, had to have quit smoking for at least four weeks by using an electronic cigarette. So everyone started using an e-cigarette, but what we found is that most of our sample, 35 of the 40 people we interviewed, told us that the first device they ever used was inadequate. It didn't satisfy their needs, and following use of that device, um, our sample... Um, about half our sample relapsed back to smoking um, and we had a smaller number of dual users. But most of our sample, 35 of the 40, went on to experiment with subsequent um, ge generation e-cigarettes and found them to be better at meeting their um, nicotine substitution and behavioural substitution needs. So looking at current patterns, and um, within our sample, about half, 19 of our 40 sample, are currently abstinent from um, tobacco completely and are vaping. Um, three of our 40 participants are abstinent from both vaping and um, tobacco smoking. And quite importantly, something I'll talk about a bit more in a moment, is that 14 of our sample of 40 were vaping, but allowed themselves occasional permissive lapses of tobacco and these didn't necessarily precipitate a full-blown relapse. So we, we're unsure really how to group them, and I think there's a, there's a new emergent category that we need to consider um, when we're talking about long-term smoking cessation in the context of electronic cigarettes. We had a very low number of dual users in our sample, and most of our sample, about, well, about half of our sample, had no plans at all to go on to quit using e-cigarettes, so we're happy um, to carry on vaping. So in terms of cessation, what we found, what people told us, is that they really experienced the switch to um, using electronic cigarette as a, as a, as a revelation. Um, in terms of previous quit attempts, most of our sample had long histories of nicotine dependence and many previous attempts at stopping smoking, but found that e-cigarettes had really been a revelation and they were very easily able to quit, which they found surprising. Um, in terms of switching... The electronic cigarette was experienced by most of our sample as a direct substitute for cigarettes. So it really attended to their nicotine substitution needs, but also, importantly, the switch was almost direct in terms of the, the things that they'd previously loved about smoking, the behavioural action, the hand-to-mouth action, the mouth feel of inhaling something. All these things were important, and vaping allowed a replication that, that they liked. So I thought you'd like to see some of our photo elicitation data. This is one person's um, overview of the situations in which they would vape across the period of a day. So I think there's a number of key important points here, um, particularly that we need to think about in terms of encouraging relapse prevention. So vape vapors seem to vape in places that they previously would not allow themselves to smoke. So this person... Oh, right. Well, I've gone on. So this person um, vaped in bed in the morning and never would have smoked in that situation um, and also vaped in the car. We found that's a really common pattern. And that's quite important, we think, um, in terms of encouraging relapse prevention that vapors find they can vape as and when they need to. And this pattern of vaping little and often in all kinds of situations is quite important in terms of avoiding any potential um, situation in which they might find themselves vulnerable to relapse to smoking. Um, there was only a small number of current dual users within our sample, but importantly, most of our sample had a long period of dual using when they first switched to e-cigarettes. So what we think is it's important that people are allowed the opportunity to experiment with different devices, different nicotine strengths to find something that really works for them. And for some people, the idea of dual using is preferable to the idea of s stopping smoking suddenly because it doesn't seem to put a pressure on them to quit um, and th the fear of failure might be quite strong. What we find, though, is through a period of dual use, our sample told us that over time they moved to having a preference for vaping over smoking. So in some ways, vaping acted as a gateway to complete smoking cessation. Importantly within our data, this concept of a permissive lapse is something that we want to really um, continue to explore in our ongoing analysis. What we're finding is that our sample of vapours talk about an occasional lapse to tobacco smoking in a very different way to the way they'd previously talked about lapses. 
So in the context of vaping, occasionally our sample would have a lapse, but really lapses were perhaps protective of full-blown smoking relapse. They weren't experienced very pleasantly for some of our sample at least. So having vaping to return to as a viable alternative meant that they didn't um, experience the lapse as being something that would inevitably, inevitably lead to a full-blown relapse. We've got a lot of data in our um, sample uh, talking about the pleasurable um, aspects of vaping and how important that is in encouraging long-term use. So people told us how they enjoyed the hit of um, vaping, the habit, the behavioural action, the hobbyist element, so talking about their different devices, building devices in some cases. There was a lot of enjoyment of the range of flavours on offer and also the habitat, so the cultural element of smoke, of vaping, sorry, and being able to vape in, in social situations that were important to people, not having to give up the previous social groups that they'd been involved in. So in conclusion, um, e-cigarettes are a groundbreaking consumer development and a disruptive technology that have really provided a new dimension to smoking cessation and particularly now to relapse prevention. Um, vaping, we've found, appears to meet the long-term needs of ex-smokers by satisfying the physical but also the psychological, social, cultural and identity-related aspects um, of addictive behaviour. So vaping, we found, can be easily incorporated into the daily routines, substituting directly smoking patterns that had previously been in place, but also, importantly, allowing a little and often um, pattern of use that was important to satisfy any nicotine cravings. Our sample told us that e-cigarettes were very pleasurable to use and that really encouraged them to continue to be long-term users. Um, and the, the dual using aspect, um, we really saw that vaping, the pleasurable aspect of vaping may encourage those who'd never intended to quit to go on to eventually quit. So a smaller number of our sample told us that they had quit smoking completely but that had never been their intention. Evidence also in our data of permissive lapses is important, we think, in that in the context of vaping, the occasional permissive lapse to tobacco smoking does not necessarily mean a full-blown tobacco smoking relapse. And finally, we suggest that the potential of vaping perceived by some users at least as being better and more preferable than smoking suggests that for them there may be a real possibility of a tobacco-free future. So some references and then finally to say thank you, please get in touch, we're always welcome, welcome comments um, and feedback, follow us on Twitter and if you're a vapor yourself please fill in our online survey which is ongoing.